Pick your favorite evil practice. Genocide. Slavery. <laughs>
one true moral code might prevent this sort of stuff from happening. That's the way that you would get to a belief in moral skepticism or an increased belief in moral skepticism. So Schaefer Landau is going to attack moral skepticism. This is a long book. Actually, it's a short book, but it's got a lot of chapters, a lot of short chapters. And the whole thing is dedicated to an attack on moral skepticism and a defense of the alternative view, which he calls moral objectivism. Moral objectivism is just, well, it's just the opposite of moral skepticism. It's the view that there is one universal objective moral code that applies to everyone everywhere. It judges their behavior. It's what determines whether their actions are right or wrong, whether they know it or not. It's out there judging us all the time. This moral law, that's moral objectivism. So he's going to be defending moral objectivism and attacking moral skepticism. And he actually starts to do that just a little bit in this chapter, just a little bit. And what we're gonna do now is look at what he says and figure out what that little attack is. Here's what he says. Full of outrage at moments and at other times just as full of reservations about the status of our moral condemnations. That's a description that he gives of the moral skeptic. He says that the moral skeptic is, well, his term for this, for this, his term for that is that they are morally schizophrenic. That is, the moral skeptic sometimes feels and expresses moral outrage. They come upon certain practices. Pick your favorite evil practice. Genocide, slavery, foot binding, female genital mutilation, uh, uh, honor killings. If you're a moral skeptic, then you still seem to think that those things are evil. You are full of outrage at moments. When you think about those things, in those moments, you are full of outrage. But at other times, because you're a moral skeptic, you are just as full of reservations about the status of our moral condemnations. That is, you feel that our moral condemnations can't be based on some objective universal moral standard. That's what it is to be morally schizophrenic. And Schaefer Landau thinks that all of the moral skeptics are afflicted with this. They all say that they don't believe that there are objective universal moral laws that apply to everyone everywhere. They say that, but then you listen to them a little later and they also say things like subjugating women is just wrong. They say things like that. Or they say enslaving another human being is evil. Or they say things that indicate that they think those things. If that's the case, then they're morally schizophrenic. And this, this is really just a characterization, it's a loaded characterization of what he thinks the moral skeptic is afflicted with, right? But it is also a kind of argument against moral skepticism. The argument is you can't have it both ways. Either you think these things are really and truly wrong for everyone everywhere whenever they engage in them, or you think that there isn't a fact about anything being really and truly wrong for everyone everywhere. You can't have it both ways. That's the, that's the criticism, that's the argument. There's one other point, we'll get rid of moral schizophrenia. There's one other point that Schaefer Landau makes in this chapter that is worth emphasizing. The other point has to do with a distinction that we've actually already talked about in this course, and it's a distinction that Schaefer Landau doesn't even label explicitly, but it is the distinction between ethics and meta-ethics. An ethical claim is a claim just about what's right or wrong. So if you say slavery is evil, or you say 
abortion is evil, or you say abortion is permissible, or you say slavery is permissible. If you say any of these things, you're making an ethical claim. But then, if you try to, as it were, zoom out and say something not about some particular practice, but about the nature of morality itself, you say something like, there are no moral facts whatsoever. Or you say, all of the moral facts are relative to a given society or a given culture. You, you make a claim like that about the general nature of morality, you're making a meta-ethical claim. So the point that Schaefer Landau makes towards the end of this chapter is just that in this book and in the subsequent chapters that we're going to read, we're not going to read the whole book, he's not making any of these. He's not making any specific claims. He's going to assume some specific claims about morality. He sometimes uses slavery as an example. He sometimes uses um, misogyny as an example or murder and that sort of thing. So he's assuming, well, in those cases, he's assuming that those things are morally bad or morally wrong. And he's assuming that some things are morally good, rather specific things. But he's not really arguing or even outright claiming anything like this. He's not going to make any claims about what the moral rules are or what the moral facts are. He's just going to make some general claims about the nature of moral facts. And that general claim is, the big general claim of the whole book is that there are such facts and they apply the same to everyone everywhere, no matter what anyone thinks about it. That is, as he calls it, moral objectivism.